थैंक यू गाइज फॉर ऑल योर लव एंड सपोर्ट टिल द लास्ट वीडियो वी हैव कंप्लीटेड आवर फर्स्ट मॉड्यूल एंड आल्सो वी डिड वन क्विक रिवीजन आल्सो सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट आवर थर्ड मॉड्यूल बिकॉज द थर्ड मॉड्यूल इज बिट इजी एंड इट इट विल टेक मच लेस टाइम टू कम्प्लीट दिस होल थर्ड मॉड्यूल इट विल टेक मच लेस टाइम so that after completion of the third module we can uh, you will get some satisfaction that uh, that our two module is completed first and third module only one module left that is the second module so let's start the third module which is nothing but digital electronics principle okay one thing before going to third module i would like to tell you that one mistake that i did in the last video in the last chapter of our first module in that video i told one capacitor that charge If you remember in that video at around 12, 12.10 minute, I told this concept. Ah, uh, this capacitor when this is uh, for positive half or positive half of uh, main supply source, this cap the diode will act as a short circuit. So it the capacitor will charge. It will charge to the maximum voltage. Nothing but VP or VS. So it will charge to maximum voltage. So when the negative half will come, then this diode will become open circuit, and the capacitor will discharge through this resistor. But what I told in the video that the capacitor will discharge through this way. So that was the wrong. The capacitor will act as a voltage source, and it will discharge in this way. Okay, I told in the last video that the capacitor will discharge through this resistor like this way, but that was the wrong. So in this way the capacitor will discharge because it will act as a battery source. Okay, the current will uh, for first half the current will enter like this, but for in the second half the current will exit from like this and it will come. In, uh, the current will circulate in this way. Okay, that one of my friend named Prithvi he found this mistake. So thank you Prithvi for this uh, help and thanks that you are watching my video. So today let's start. So this was the only mistake that I did in the last video. So you just uh, correct it, and uh, oh, let's start the digital electron principle. Okay, so these are the topics that we are going to deal with in this digital electron principle. So the first one is introduction. In the introduction, we will see an overview just for of an what is digital signal, what is analog signal. Okay. Then the binary digit. That how this digital signal are represented in terms of digits. Then we will see the logic level. What are the logic level that are present to represent a signal? Then digital waveform. What is a digital waveform? How this logic level can be used to make a waveform? And last we will see some basic logic function like AND, OR, NOT. So these are some basic. Logic function that we are going to use to make a digital circuit. Okay, so let's start. Start with the. Let's see what is there in the introduction. So if you remember in our first video of our first module that we discussed about signal that is analog signal or digital signal. Then what is an analog signal? A analog signal. If you draw it, it will looks like that. This is the time axis. This is the amplitude axis. You see here the in the analog signal both my time. axis and my both amplitude axis they are continuous in nature the time axis also continuous the amplitude axis are also continuous if you remember then what we did we are going to divide the time axis into number of slots like t0 t1 equal interval of time t2 then what it will become it will become a discrete signal this is a analog signal we are going to make this analog into a digital signal for that we have to first convert our analog signal into discrete discrete means by changing the continuous time into discrete time these are the discrete time so each each, inter, each interval we are going to divide the time axis so this is t0 this is t1 this interval is equal t2 t3 like this then what will happen we will get some values so this is also not digital but it is discretized signal discretized means it is discrete in time axis but analog signal is both continuous in time and continuous in magnitude now we are going to discrete our magnitude this is only discrete in time but not discrete in magnitude if you see this also looks like the same analog that is continuous in nature now we are interested to 
make the amplitude actually also discrete then that signal will become distal signal it means like this so these are the discrete values okay so this is the distal signal this is both discrete in time axis also this is t0 this is t1 this is t2 and it is also discretized in amplitude axis this is a1 this is a2 these are the levels amplitude levels so this is a distal signal this is a discretized signal okay let's take one example so that you can get more clarity suppose if i'll ask you what is the temperature right now suppose it is 10 am and i am interested to know what is the temperature so at 10 am my temperature let's take it's 31 degree celsius let's take just after two seconds i ask again what is the temperature at 10 am 0 to second this is minute this is second so 10 and 0 to second again the temperature might be 31.1 might be again i ask what is at 0 4 0 6 0 8 at 10.1 minute so what do you get you are getting a value that are continuous in nature so if you draw these values in a graph you will see if this is my temp this is my time axis and this is my temperature axis and if you will draw the time versus temperature you will might get a continuous signal this is suppose this is my at 10 this is 10.002 this is 10 minute 0 2 second 10 minute 0 4 second so these are the some increased value this might be 31.2 degree so this might be 32 degree okay so if you draw the time versus temperature you will get an analog signal so that is a analog signal then how to make this analog into this so what i am going to do now i am going to discrete at this time means i am not going to ask at a certain interval i am going to ask at 10 am then at 11 am then at 12 noon then at 1 pm i am going to ask like that then what will happen this is my 10 am temperature so this is my 11 this is my 12 noon this is 1 pm so at this time the temperature might be over here this time temperature might be over here at 12 temperature might be over here and at noon suppose the temperature is very peak it is over here and at 2 3 the temperature is less bit less it is decreasing okay now this is the it is 11 it is my discretized signal because we have i have discretized the time axis but it is not digital it is analog signal it is discrete because it is only discrete in time axis now if i make this i if i take the temperatures and i'll make discrete this amplitude then that will become the digital signal means at 10 the temperature is high at 11 that is suppose another value so these are the labels if i make discrete this uh, at um, temperature axis also then it will become a digital signal okay so this is the difference between analog and digital signal remember this analog signal is continuous in time and continuous in amplitude but digital signal is both discrete in time and discretized in amplitude okay In our daily uses, uh, means whether you are using a computer or a television or any system, you are going to medical or you are going for a military section, each and everywhere this uh, electronic circuit circuit that are designed using both digital and analog signal. But the digital signal is more preferred as compared to analog signal. Why? Because there are certain advantages of digital signal. Like this digital signal can be easily transmitted over a range because there will be no signal loss the second thing is that digital signal can be stored in very less space very compact space as compared to analog signal or third i can say that the noise that is interfer interference outside from the interference that is very less for digital signal and that is very high for analog signal so these are the three advantages by why we are going to use this discrete signal one of my student i think Sinma, he asked this question sir why we are using this discrete signal even though the analog signal which is we can see we can use so these are the three cases that for that only we are going to use the digital signal but first one is it is reliable and can easily transmitted okay second one it need less space to store this data it need less space means compact size is needed and third one is less vulnerable to noise means digital signal is less affected by the noise so these are the three advantages now let's see in our daily life uh, where we are going to use this analog signal and analog and digital signal suppose 
uh, one singer one singer who is singing a song using this microphone okay using this microphone this singer is singing singing means here these are the acoustic signal these are the acoustic signal that is uh, from the mouth of the singer then using this microphone this microphone is capturing this acoustic signal then what is it doing it is converting this microphone it is a transducer if you remember it is a transducer which will convert my acoustic wave into electrical signal so this is it will convert me a signal like this this is called audio signal this is called audio signal it has some amplitude means it is a voltage audio signal with voltage with respect to time okay it will convert our acoustic to into electrical signal here i am going to use one linear amplifier so what is the function of amplifier it will increase my amplitude of the signal that is power in terms of voltage or in terms of current so if i am giving this signal to the input of this linear amplifier then at the output what i will get i will get the same signal with increased amplitude it means it is almost to the same signal but with increase in the amplitude okay you will see this signal this signal more resemble but here the amplitude is increased then we are going to use a loudspeaker so this is a loudspeaker what it will do it will convert it is again a transducer which will convert my electrical signal to uh, that acoustic signal means it will convert this signal into sound wave with a high amount high energy because this uh, speaker that singer that is singing that is very with a less amplitude so after putting this uh, linear amplifier it will the amplitude is increased now the output of the loudspeaker which is very high that we all can hear a large amount of audience can hear so this is one process that is analog signal for analog signal this is one process now but in our electronic circuit this both analog and digital signal both are going we are going to use so let's see how with using this process our analog and digital signal both can be involved okay okay so this is an example so in this example you can see here one singer let's take this singer that is he sees sing he or she is singing some song that is in form of acoustic wave or sound wave that microphone that is capturing this acoustic or sound wave and is converting to electrical signal so electrical that is in terms of voltage or current that is this is the electrical signal which is called the audio signal now this audio signal is applied to a adc means analog to digital converter this is the analog signal then after the adc what it will become it will become the digital signal which is nothing but number of bit means like this if you remember what what is the function of an analog to digital converter in the analog to digital converter we apply the analog signal over here that is v in and at the output what we will get we will get number of bit that is b not to bn if you remember that we derived one formula for that is d which is nothing but b not 2 power 1 b plus b1 2 power 2 like this in this way analog digital we can convert so this is nothing but the analog signal that is in terms of voltage converted to number of bit now this digital signal is stored in a cd that is called compact disc it is a disc which is capturing the digital signal in a compact way okay so when this cd will rotate either in our pc or in our laptop or in some other electronic place when this uh, cd will rotate then what happen one electric laser laser source is there that laser source is falling the light that is falling on this compact disc when this cd is rotating that light source what drawing the data that is the data that is present over here when they are rotating that data that were was present over there the data we are getting over here this is the representation represent by one like this zero by this we will see this letter case okay so by using some method we are getting this digital data that is present inside this cd now this digital data is applied to a dac ds means digital to analog converter so what what will it function it will convert the digital signal to analog signal whatever may be may be like this this is the analog signal so what will be the function of this is adc so in dac we are applying digital signal means number of bit at output we are getting a voltage that is the uh, same voltage that we are applied over here okay but the amplitude of this voltage is bit less this amplitude is bit less that's why we are going to use a linear amplifier what is the function of a linear amplifier it will amplify the strength 
means we will get the same signal with some increased amplitude this linear amplifier will amplify then it is now this analog signal analog uh, signal or analog voltage signal that is applied to the loudspeaker this loudspeaker will convert my analog signal into a high frequency or high speech audio signal that can be audible to uh, to the citizens okay so this is the process when a singer sings a song by this process our uh, using loudspeaker we are getting the voice that is uh, from that the singer is singing okay so this process include both analog and digital electronics means here analog signal is there here also analog signal is there and here inside the system when the data is transmitted that digital signal is there that's why we are in our daily life we are using this analog and digital signal combinedly okay so this is all about the overview of analog and digital signal now we will see the binary digit so what is so what is a binary digit this digital signal that was the digital waveform that can be represented only two state okay you know this is the two state means one can be either high or one can be low unlike analog signal in analog signal there are various state but in digital only two state that is one is high and second one is low so this two state they are called this two states they are called cores what do you mean by core when the state that is high and low this two state using this cores we can represent a number or any alphabet or any symbol to represent this number alphabet and symbol in our electron circuit or inside a computer computer we are going to use this cores cores means these are the two state or that one is high or one is low so to represent these two state we have one method that is called binary signal in binary signal there are two number state one is zero and one is zero one is zero and the second one is one so these are the two state here also we need two state to represent these numbers so we can use our binary signal if you remember in our first video i told you that binary signal is the easiest way to represent a digital signal okay so this is the easiest way zero and one so this zero and one what are these are called these are called bits bit how bit is formed this zero is called also one bit this one is called bit this binary digit this the zero and one are the binary digit these are the digits so the by and t if we combine this binary digit it will form a bit means by from here t from digit that is here so that is combined in a way that is called bit so what are the bit in a binary system that is 0 and 1 okay this 0 and 1 will be represent to the numbers or alphabet and or some symbol using the cores okay so there are these are the binary digits is nothing but the 0 and 1 now we will see the logic level okay one thing uh, in this binary digit suppose i have a positive logic positive logic means my zero will be represent by low value one will be represent by high value okay this is the positive means it is used everywhere this is the positive logic what do you mean by negative logic negative logic means my zero will be represent by high value one will be represent by the low value Okay, there are two type of uh, logic system that is present. One is positive logic, second one is negative logic. For the positive logic, that is the general case. Zero will be low, one will be high. But in the negative logic, that is the inverse of this uh, positive logic. That is zero will be represent by high value and one will be represent by a low value. But in general case, we always use this positive logic. And in question, if in question some something is given that is whether to use negative logic, then only we can use negative. Else, everywhere we are going to use this positive logic. so what do you mean by this logic level logic level means to represent the this binary digits that is called bits in a waveform we need a level level means you see i what i told in digital circuit there are two level one is high and one and low to represent this voltage levels we need a logic so logic level means for ideal case there are two logic level One is zero, one is one. Zero and one. Zero will be represented for low, and one will be represented for high. This is for the ideal case. But for practical case, so this is the zero and this is the one. Okay. So for practical case, there is a 
रेंज फॉर बोथ हाई एंड लो दिस इज फॉर लो लेवल विथ मिनिमम वैल्यू दिस इज लो लेवल फॉर मैक्सिमम वैल्यू दिस इज ए हाई लेवल फॉर मिनिमम वैल्यू एंड दिस इज ए हाई लेवल फॉर मैक्सिमम वैल्यू इट मीन्स नाउ माय हाई लेवल व्हिच इज नॉट ओनली फॉर वन इट विल बी अ विद इन अ रेंज विथ एच मीन टू एच मैक्स माय लो लेवल व्हिच इज नॉट जीरो बट फॉर प्रैक्टिकल इट हैज अ रेंज फ्रॉम एल मीन टू एल मैक्स ओके इफ यू टेक ऑन एग्जांपल लेट्स टेक 0.8 दिस इज 1.2 दिस इज 2 दिस इज 3.2 सो इफ एनी वैल्यू दैट विल कम बिटवीन 0.8 टू 1.2 लेट्स टेक 0.9 1.15 सो दिस वैल्यूज विल कम अंडर दिस फ्लो लेवल लॉजिक and if any value that is to be between 2 to 3.2 that will come over here okay this the bit any that value between l max to l min is called on acceptable on on acceptable level means in this range the value can be either high or either low depend upon our requirement if any value that will come 1.5 so according to our requirement that value might be high that value might be low but that's why a range that is assigned that is called on acceptable level but not unlike ideal case for in practical case here is a range okay so our low level and high level will be within that range now we'll see the digital web term what is a web form when this uh binary digits that is 0 and 1 that can be represented with this logic labels and the that is called that are called the pods logic labels to represent this 1 and 0 so in digital waveform there is a increase or in decrease of both voltage back and forth so there is a change in voltage level that is sometimes the values of voltage from goes from low to high or sometimes high to low so based upon that the digital waveform is formed so let's see what is that okay this is called positive going pulse this is called negative going pulse okay there are certain terms remember one is leading edge i will define over there one is falling edge one is rising edge and second one is trailing edge all are edge okay so what do you mean by positive going pulse when my signal voltage goes from low value to high value and it is back it will come back to high to low that is called positive going pulse so for positive going pulse my value goes from low to high and again back to low for negative going pulse my voltage level that is that varies from high to low and then again back to high that is called negative going pulse so this is the positive going pulse positive going pulse this is the negative going pulse you see in positive going pulse this is the first it is coming so at t not it is t1 so at t not that is occurring first that is called my leading leading edge leading means it is starting from here it is leading from the front so that is the leading edge and you see the leading edge which is nothing but rising so it is from low to high low to high means it is rising so for the positive going pulse the first edge which is nothing but my leading edge and both rising edge so this is the two uh, both leading and rising edge this one the, the first line okay now for t1 at t1 it is coming at last since it is coming at last it is called trailing edge since this, it, it is coming first at t not means that's why it is leading edge and it is coming last means after some interval that is called trailing edge and you see in my positive going pulse this trailing edge which is nothing but a falling edge also why it is it falls from a value high value to low value that's why since it is come a value ranging from high to low that's why it is called uh, falling edge also okay so for the positive going pulse for positive going pulse this is the nothing but my leading edge and also rising edge 
this is the trailing edge and also falling edge now you tell me for the negative going pulse this is coming first this is a t not this is t1 since it is coming first so this t not is what it will be what it will be said it is nothing but the leading edge because it is coming first so it is leading edge so e is my leading edge is it rising or uh, sorry e is, is it is falling or rising since it is falling because from high value to low value it is falling so that's our my leading edge or i can say my falling edge is it clear or not it is leading because it is coming first but it is falling with a from a value high to low now this edge this secondary edge this is coming last means after some interval it is coming so since it is coming last why what it will say it will say by trailing edge means it is coming late or it is coming last and you can see this is rising means low to high value so this is called trailing edge or also it's also called rising edge okay don't confuse between this four term trailing rising and uh, leading and falling just see the graph whether it is rising or falling rising means it has to be from low to high falling means it should be from high to low it should fall from high to low it should goes from low to high okay and when it will come first that will be leading it is coming first it is also leading it will come last that's why it is trailing it is also coming at last that is also trailing so these are the four terms that is included in this digital waveform this is for the ideal case i mean you see the time taken to change from low to high is almost zero means a fraction of second also it is changing means at, at a small interval also it is changing but uh, practical case it is not the it is not the case for practical what happen it will take some time to rise from a one level to another level it will take some time that is for practical case but for ideal case it is a sudden rise or a sudden fall so let's see the practical case and some terms that is related to that let me draw that one okay so this is for a practical it is a practical pulse ideally what we say what we see in that this is our ideal case this is our pulse one pulse which rises from high value low value to high value and high value to low value it is a zero time okay but it is the practical case so let's see at practical case my rise time here what is the rise time it is zero rise time here the rise time is zero but for practical case the rise time which will be between my 10% of my waveform to 90% of my waveform this is 10% this is 50% this is 90% you see from if you start from here this is zero this is the baseline okay this is the baseline from here to here if this is 100% then it is 10 it is let's 50 this is 90 and this is 90 to 100 okay this is my rise time which which lies between 10% of the signal to 90% of the signal so similarly what will be my fall time which will be same from 90% of my waveform to the 10% of my waveform this is called tf this is called the fall time it is not ideal because it it is taking some time to fall from here to here okay why i am not including this 0 to 10 and 90 to 100 let's draw it with like that why i am not including this this 10% this 10% because from my 10% to 90% my signal looks like a linear curve this is a linear this is also linear but you see in this part or in this part what is my signal looks like non linear or not that's why i am not including this uh, inside the rise time and fall time this 10% and this 10% also here in the 10% over here and the 10% over here okay because that these are they are the showing non linear characteristic only only i am considering the linear characteristic that is between 10 to 90 and 90 to 10 this is the rise time this is the fall time but for ideally rise time is zero and fall time is zero okay then one term that is here it is called pulse width it means what is the width of my pulse that is represented by tw so how to find this tw the tw is nothing but 50% of the rise time to the 50% of my fall time let's draw it let's take this is the 50% okay so what is my tw which will be the 50% of my rise time to 50% of my fall time in ideal case what is my pulse width this is my pulse width this is tw but since it is taking some time to rise and taking some time to fall that's why i am taking at the center means 50% to 50% this point 
दिस इज कॉल्ड ओवरशूट वट डू मीन बाई ओवरशूट इट इज द मैक्सिमम वोल्टेज ओके दिस इज द अनफिजूड लेवल लेट्स ट्रैक ओवर ए अप्रोक्सिमेट ओवर ए वेल्यू हियर दिस इज माई एम्पलीट्यूड हियर दिस इज माई एम्पलीट्यूड ओके हियर दिस इज माई एम्पलीट्यूड हियर दिस इज माई एम्पलीट्यूड आई एम टेकिंग एन एवरेज सो दिस वैल्यू इज कॉल्ड ओवरशूट इट मीन इट इज द मैक्सिमम एम्पलीट्यूड मैक्सिमम वैल्यू ऑफ पिक ऑफ माई सिग्नल दिस इज द मैक्सिमम पिक इट इज नथिंग बट माई मिनिमम पिक दैट इज कॉल्ड ऑनडोर शूट बट इट इज कॉल्ड इट इज ऑनडोर शूट दिस इज कॉल्ड ओवर शूट इट इज द मैक्सिमम वोल्टेज इट इज द मिनिमम वोल्टेज दिस स्मॉल वेब्स दिस स्मॉल वेब्स दिज आर कॉल्ड द रिंजेस This means these are the small fraction that is changing with respect to my time. So these are the ranges. This is overshoot and these are the undershoot. Okay, this is an ideal. This is a practical pulse. So in a digital waveform, it contains a sequence of pulse. Means it is only one pulse. Now I, let's take this ideal pulse. And now I am including this one. This is one. This is one. So this is called a train of pulse. train of pulse if you remember in our impulse chapter i told you this is the train of impulse or not this is a t not this is a 2t not this is zero this is minus t not like this it is a train of impulse means various impulse signal are combined similarly here so let's take this is a ideal pulse and there are various pulses they are added to form a train of pulse that is called train of pulse okay this train of pulse will show me the data that is present here here let's take this is a train of pulse it means it contain 1 0 it is 1 it is 1 it is 0 it is 1 it is 0 it is 0 so it is giving me some data so if i uh, decode this data i might get my original signal that is the analog signal so this train of pulse it is combined of pulses that is called train of pulse it will represent my digital wave from and digital wave from this train of pulse will occur that will give me the information okay. so that train of pulse okay that train of pulse which is the continuous addition of pulse that can be either periodic or aperiodic that train of pulse that can be either periodic or aperiodic if that train of pulse will be periodic so this will be my periodic uh, train of pulse and if that if you see this is the time period which is nothing but t and what will the frequency which is nothing but 1 by t okay this is for the periodic case and for a periodic case what will be the my uh, train of my signal uh, how it will looks like it will be it might be a value okay could you find any period in this signal because this signal is not uh, repeating after certain interval time here you see this is the signal after this time it is in, uh, repeating after some time so this is the periodic train of pulse it is the aperiodic train of pulse and this is the frequency how to find if time is given in question if time is given you can find the frequency now one term that is called that is called duty cycle duty cycle so this duty cycle it is a problematic point that this duty cycle how can find the duty cycle if a pulse is given in a pulse i have to find the T W that is the pulse width, and I have to divide the whole time period, and I have to multiply hundred. That will give me the duty cycle in terms of percentage. So duty duty cycle means it is the ratio between pulse width, that is fifty percent of my rising time to fifty percent of my fall time to total time period. That is for the time for the time for who is my it is the duty that is the pulse that is doing. Okay, so T W by capital T. Because if you see for the practical case, if suppose this is a pulse, this is the fifty, this is the fifty. Only for this much time only my uh, cycle is working, and for this time, if you draw like this, this is the rest part, this is the rest part. For this part, my cycle is not working. So I am taking for the fifty percent means I am taking the duty cycle by the T width, that is pulse width, divided by the total time period. This is the total time period. Okay, so that is the time for which my cycle is working. That is called duty cycle. now in a pulse this is the called bit rate this is called bit rate what it is called it is called bit rate okay so bit rate means the time interval it is needed to a pulse complete that is from low to high and back high to low that is one cycle is complete that is one pulse not one cycle is complete one pulse that is called bit rate this is also one bit rate 
okay so we'll see this uh, how a bitrate is included in a signal now let's see the uh, clock in each digital wave from a time basic timing circuit that is implemented already that is synchronized with our digital wave from that is called clock so let's see what is a clock so it is a periodic signal and which is synchronized with each digital signal let me draw that this is my clock signal okay which is periodic but it, it is does not contain any information it does not contain any information it is only for the synchronization property means at the input side i am sending a signal and output side i have to recover that digital signal if i send a clock pulse along with my signal i will draw the signal over here then at the output side i can easily match okay this is the clock period and for this clock period this is the signal and for this clock period this is the signal whether it is high or low let's take a, this this is my input signal or my waveform this is my waveform this is clock waveform so this is a waveform is named a this is my clock let's take this is my waveform 1 0 1 1 0 again 1 okay this is nothing but 1 0 1 1 0 1 this is the data or the message or that is a waveform in digital signal that is a digital waveform this is the actual information content over here this is a clock signal that is added with this so you see this uh, what as i told before this is the bit rate which is nothing but bt or tb bit rate this is the bit rate so for the clock period you see this is one pulse this is the clock signal for this pulse this is the clock signal this is also a bit rate that is called tb you see for each pulse my clock signal that is for equal interval it is happening means it is a periodic signal and at the rising edge of my clock pulse my signal is changing whether it is changing from low to high or from high to low that is at the rising edge of the clock pulse at the rising edge you see this is the this is one clock pulse in this clock pulse this is the rising edge and in this clock pulse this is the rising edge and this at this rising edge my signal is changing that is from high to low or from low to high again from high low to high how it is changing at this rising pulse Again, at the clock rising pulse, this signal is either changing or it is fixed constant. It means this waveform is changing at the rising pulse. There are certain signals which will change at the this falling, this trailing phase. Means my signal might be like this. Means it will change a signal. It will change its value. Like this. Means at this interval, at the falling edge, at the falling edge of the clock pulse, the signal is changing its property. Means from high to low or from low to high. Okay, these are the two type of representation of a waveform along with the clock pulse. One can be at the rising edge, one can be at the falling edge also, or the trailing edge. So this is the representation of a clock signal uh, using a waveform. Now this clock is for only for use for synchronize. Now a timing diagram is there, along with the signal a timing diagram is there. Timing diagram means, suppose this is a wave from A, now let's take a wave from B, let's take a wave from C. If I will draw, uh, let's take this is the, let's take this is 1, this is 1, 0, sorry, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, let's take. 1, 2, 6, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6, we are there. And let's have another signal. Okay, so this is my waveform C. There are three waveforms. So what is the function of timing diagram? A time, from the timing diagram, we can say about the characteristic of a signal. What does it mean? If you see at this interval, at this interval, at this interval, and at this interval, my signal values are high. Okay, if you see only for this clock pulse or at this interval, my this one, two, three, these signals values are high, and there are no such cases for for the time where my signals are equal high. So means by using the timing diagram, I can tell about the property. What I can say about another thing that uh, for the 
away from B and C for the last interval and for the uh, one to, uh, the, for the last interval, these two signals have value low. Okay, and if I compare my uh, wave from A and wave from C, I can say 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. For the first four interval, for the first four interval, my signal A and wave from A and wave from C, they are same. It means it is a one type of information that I am getting from the timing diagram. Means by seeing the wave, wave from, I can elucidate the data about that. Okay. So this is all about the digital waveform. Now we will see the basic logic function. So what do you mean by basic logic function? I just told earlier that there are three type of basic logic function. That one is not, one is and, and last one is or. So what is the circuit digital symbol for this not, which is nothing but this. It has one input and one output. So if I'll give a input, I'll get a bar. A bar means if I'll give zero, I'll give a high value. If I'll give a high value, I'll get a low value. This will act as an inverter. Inverter means it is inverting my input. So this is a not get. Okay. Or that is called a logic function, not logic function, or it can be implemented in digital circuit using a not get. So this is the symbol for a not get. For the and for the not get, whatever the input, the output will be reverse of that. That means zero to one or one to zero. Or that is used in inverter. What is a So for the and gate, these are the inputs and this is my output. Okay. And and logic function can take any number of input and it will give me one output. Similarly, this or or logic function, it can take any number of input, it will give me one output. So this is the circuit symbol for or. Okay. This is the circuit symbol for AND. Now let's take a two input AND gate and two input OR gate and let's see the truth table for that. If I take a two input AND gate, so this is the two input. This is A and B are two input. And when in digital circuit number of input are N, then how many possible combinations can be formed? That is 2 power N. Here number of input is 1, so 2 power 1 means 2 possible, here see here 2 possibles are there. In second case, let's take 2 input, means there are 4 possible combinations uh, as input. So if this is my A, this is B, this is nothing but A dot B. Okay, it means if I take 0, 0, output will be 0. If I take 0, 1, output will be 0. For 1, 0, output will be 0. For 1, 1, that will be 1. It means for a AND logic function, if my both inputs will be high, then only my output will be high. Okay. And in either either case, my output will be 0. That is, that is the true table for this AND logic function. Or this can be implemented as an AND gate. Similarly, for OR gate, let's take a two input OR gate. Let's take the input A and B. This is nothing but A plus B. Here you see this is A, this is B. This is nothing but A plus B. So similarly here also two input means there are four possible combinations. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1. So accordingly what will be my output? My output will be 0, 1, 1, 1. It means if my either of my input is 1 or both are 1 in any case, that, then the output will be 1. And if my both inputs are 0, then my outputs are 0. It means my both inputs are low, output is low. And in all other cases, my outputs will be high. 1 means I am representing high. 0 means I am representing low. In this signal, why I am writing 1? Because this is the value going from uh, positive logic. That is from positive uh, pulse. From 0 to low to high and from high to low. That is why I am that's, that's writing 1. This is the high logic level. Okay. So these are the three type of logic, basic logic function. Okay, one thing that the digital signal that we generate that is in terms of this one zero whatever may be the output of the digital signal that has to be transferred from one end to another end. So how that can be that can be transferred? So there are two ways that we can transfer a one signal. What are those? One is in by serial serial transferring. Second one is by parallel transfer, parallel data transfer. So what do you mean by serial data transfer? If this is the sender end, this is the sender end and here is the receiver end. 
here is the receiver end here i have to send the data here i have to receive suppose i want to send my data 1011 let's take i want to send this bit it means 1011 okay so here how is it will send first it will send the one that is over here one it will take from time t0 to t1 then the next one will be there which it will take time t1 to t2 and then it will take the this value zero which is nothing but t2 to t3 and then the next one will be there t3 to t4 it means in serial transfer it need one line you see here is one line only but the time taken to transfer my four bit will be suppose let's one signal take one microsecond to reach once one pulse need one microsecond to reach a receiver then to send four bit i need four microsecond the time taken here is more but here you required only one line what is parallel data transfer suppose this is the sender side this is the receiver side so i same 1011 i want to send from my sender end to receiver end then there are four possible lines four possible not possible four lines in the first line one will be transferred in the second line next one will be transferred in the third line the zero will be transferred and in the next line one will be transferred so what happen if we we'll see at t not interval to t1 interval at this one interval means at one microsecond all my data that is transferred to the receiver end but here the number of line that needed is more okay so in parallel data transfer number of line bit higher than serial data transfer but time taken is less so this is the one advantages of parallel data transfer that is time taken is less but one disadvantage is number of line is more here i need number more number of line but in serial data transfer but there are one line means number of line is less that is one advantage but time taken is more this is less time taken is more this is one disadvantage so according to our requirement if we have more number of line and we need we have to send our data within a very short interval of time then we have to use this parallel data transfer so that within very less time we can transfer our data but when we have a very less number of line and we have enough time then we can go for this serial data transfer okay this is all about for the today's topic in the next video we will see the number system that are binary number system and decimal number system